Hello, this is Fahra Mukemi. And I'm Ali Al-Kinani. And we're here to talk about Henry Ford and his establishment of the Ford Motor Company. Henry Ford was a very simple man who believed that everyone is equal and that everyone deserves. As he practiced what he preached, he developed himself into becoming one of America's wealthiest and most powerful men. On June 30, 1863, Henry Ford was born on a farm to William and Mary Ford in Spring Wells Township, Michigan, located about nine miles outside of Detroit. Despite the strong standards of living that was going on that time, which were particularly into farm laboring, Henry Ford was more of a manufacturing favorer. He found himself that he was more fit into the technology business. Henry Ford leaves his family on December 1879 to pursue his interest in missionary in Detroit. One of the first job is at the Flowers Brothers machine shop where his salary was about $2.5 a week. Moving on, on April 11, 1888, Henry Ford was married to one Clara Bryant. A few years later, she gave birth to the first son on November 6, 1893. On June 4, 1896, after a few years of spending nearly every minute referring to his engine in the small shed behind his home, Henry Ford completes his first automobile, the Quadricycle, and gladly drives it through the streets of Detroit. On August 5, 1899, with financial investors he has attracted in his Quadricycle, Ford forms the Detroit Automobile Company. However, most of these investors didn't value Henry Ford's goal in having a better machine that is cheaper to be bought by the middle-class people. Ford enters one of his cars into the 10-mile car race in Gross Point, which he wins. His victory makes him the talk of the automobile circles. On June 16, 1903, Henry Ford and his partner Alexander Malcolm, who was known to be Detroit's largest coal dealer, incorporate the Ford Motor Company with $28,000 in cash and 21,000 in promises funds from 10 other investors, which were mostly friends and relatives. The Model T, which was the center of demand, known to be the most successful car in history, in addition to the groundbreaking $5 per day wage, Ford easily ushered in the modern world. By doing so, not only he developed financially, he also liberated the human spirit. He was a revolutionary. With his great impact to our century now, it is safe to say that we are living in Henry Ford's world now. As time passed, Henry Ford successfully developed his company and automobiles to a point which he reached his satisfaction. However, as he grew to be a very powerful man, many were targeting him and attacking him with lawsuits. On December 30, 1918, Henry Ford suddenly resigns from the presidency of the Ford Motor Company. His 25-year-old son, Edsel Ford, is elected to the role. Despite his wealth and success, he was always hungry for more. It was so ironic that he despised the wealthy because he was one of the nation's richest men. He also feared the people would bring him down. As Mr. Long became just pointed out, Henry Ford always remained restless and driven by always seeking to control what was beyond his potential. September 30, 1927, Henry Ford purchased land in Brazil to establish rubber plantations in what would become known as Fordlandia. In late 1927, eight years after construction began, Ford's enormous, River Rounge factory complex begins full-scale automobile production. The vertically integrated factory is Henry Ford's vision realized that entire finished vehicles could be built from scratch using raw materials owned and supplied by the Ford Motor Company without dependence on outside suppliers. On the road of success, there will definitely be obstacles and one of those obstacles to Henry Ford is on October 29, 1929, the stock market crashes and the Great Depression hits the US. Henry Ford institutes a $7 a day in effort to aid his workers and fend off the effects of the depression. But it is no to his avail. Between 1929 and 1932, Ford must lay off nearly half of his workforce. On May 29, 1937, the Ford security staff violently attacks United Auto Worker, members handing out pro-union leaflets at the round. The altercation, which was captured by our photographers, became known as the Battle of Overpass. On April 1941, outside the roads, 50,000 Ford employees refuse to work until Ford agrees to meet union demands calling for higher wages, overtime pay, and job security. Ford declares he would rather shut down his factories than give in to the union. On June 1941, under the pressure from Edsel, the unions and the government whose war contracts were at stake, Ford finally signs an agreement with union officials. He gave the United Auto Workers everything it wants and more. A union shop, wages equal to the highest in the industry, and union dues deducted from workers' paychecks. As my partner mentioned earlier in his documentary, Henry's son, Edsel Ford, was elected as president in late 1918, however, not until May 26, 1943. Edsel dies at age of 49 from incurable stomach cancer. On June 1943, Henry Ford is re-elected as president of the Ford Motor Company. Ford suffers a debilitating stroke while on a trip to Richmond Hill. This affected him very much. 
So on November 5th, 1945, Henry Ford II, Edsel's oldest son and president of the Ford Motor Company, for just six weeks sells Ford Landia back to the Brazilian government for a fraction of its value. On April 7th, 1947, Henry Ford dies at Fair Lane at age of 83.